Okay, in this section, we are going to talk about building envelope. Now, building envelope is probably one of the most difficult and most complicated uh, sections of the survey, and it's one of the areas that um, schools usually require the most help and the most guidance on. So I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to do as much as I can, but in, if you get to the situation where you don't know how to answer some of these building envelope questions, because a lot of them are kind of tricky, um, that's when it's time to reach out for help, and uh, we're, we're definitely happy to help you. But uh, let's get started with the building envelope. As with all the other sections, I could click down here on building envelope on the home page, or I can go to assessment and then click on building envelope. So although this doesn't look like there's a lot to it, because um, there's only four background sections, and again, we answer these questions first, and then that will give us the sub-questions that get answered. Uh, trust me, it's a lot more complicated because even the section overview questions, there's more section overview questions in this section than there are in any other section. So what we're going to do is, okay, first, does the school have one or more student ent entrances? The answer for this, of course, is yes. Uh, does it have uh, entrances for non-students? Now, these are uh, students that uh, entrances that the students are not supposed to enter through. So we're going to say yes. Does it have a window area? Now, in most cases, again, 99% of the time, the school does have windows. Sometimes they're very small windows for protection, but they're, you know, we're gonna ask, does it have windows areas? And then does the school have a dedicated dock and delivery area? So I'm gonna say yes to that too. And these are all um, a little bit of description of what a building envelope is. It's not the controls you put in place to keep people out, like checking IDs and stuff. It's more like your windows, your doors, your ventilation system, um, places that people can sneak into the building or harm the students by doing something to um, part of the building. So I'm going to hit save and reload. Okay, now uh, let's start with the section overview questions because that's where we always start. But these are a lot of, you're going to see there's some of the trickier questions. Okay, are there exterior doors other than doors or windows? <laughs> or I'm sorry, are there exterior openings other than doors or windows that would allow entry to the school? So that's any area that's greater than 96 inches. Like is there an open vent where somebody could climb, climb into the school, get in? So there, are there exterior openings that are other than doors and windows? So I am going to say yes so that we get we see what the sub question is. Now the question after that is are such openings protected with grates or other barriers? So you might have an exterior opening like a big vent area, but we are going to protect it with a barrier. Okay, next set. Are utility, mechanical, electrical, and telecom rooms and access to interior space secured from the outside and or roof with locks. So you've got telecom rooms, you've got mechanical rooms, you've got entry rooms that might be, ex um, that have access to interior space that you can get to from the outside. Um, are they secured? So we're gonna say yes. Okay, are these high security locks? Now this is where you start to get into the tricky questions, okay? Uh, again, what is a high security lock versus not a high security lock? Um, that's kind of out of the scope of me helping you answer the questions, but um, we're going to say they are high security locks. But, th you know, this is one of the questions. Now, when in doubt, write a comment, okay? Write a comment and then make it a private comment for the team. We have a lock. This is the type of lock it is. Send it to us. We'll do what we can to answer the question, find out, and do some research on the lock. Um, is any access to utility, mechanical, electrical, and telecom rooms and access to interior space covered by intrusion detection system, video surveillance system, or electronic access control? I'm going to say yes. Okay. What technologies are covering these areas? So we've got these um, utility, mechanical, electrical, and telecom rooms. Um, do we have an intrusion detection system? I'm going to say yes. Do we have a video surveillance system? I'm going to say yes. And do we have electronic access control? I'm going to leave that one blank. Okay. Does the school building have an air handling system? Now, the reason we want this is for two reasons. One, they might try, somebody might try to use the air handling system as a way to get into the building. The other is they may try to harm students using the air handling system, putting something 
that could be blown throughout the school. So I'm going to say there's an air handling system. Now, does the system have outside air intakes? Yes or no? So if it does have access air intakes, we want to know the location of the weakest general air intake to the facility. Okay, so weakest means um, the easiest to get at. So is the easiest air intake greater than 30 feet above ground or roof mounted? Is it greater than 10 feet but less than or equal to 30 feet? Meaning anybody who's trying to gain access to that air intake and put something there, they have to go above 10 feet, but they don't have to go all the way to 30 feet. Um, from the ground level, to less than or equal to 10 feet. I mean, it pretty much means a small ladder or maybe you can even reach it, okay? Um, but it does have restricted access to chemical, biological, or radiological contaminants. So granted it's low, but you've got something in place to stop um, chemical, biological, or radiation um, contaminants. Or the worst case scenario is it's less than 10 feet from ground area, but it's got unrestricted access. And from this standpoint, a grate or a barrier is not considered unrestricted access. Um, you, it's gotta be something that pretend, protects against CBR, chemical, biological, or radiological. So that's your weakest link here. In this case, your weakest answer is that it's lower than 10 feet and you can put something there and get it in. Um, are grade level or below grade level intakes protected by fencing? So here, this is the counter to the, the question above where it says we have air intakes, it doesn't have any CBR deterrence on it, but we do have fencing to keep you away from it. So we're gonna say yes. Are intake grills protected from tampering or removal? We're gonna say yes. Um, what monitoring is taking place on the intakes? Do we have an intrusion detection system, which is an alarm system on the intakes? Do we have a VSS that is looking at the intakes or we're not monitoring? And that's what I'm gonna say here. Okay, are gas absorption filters used on recirculated air as well as on outside air intakes that serve critical areas? Now I'm gonna say no here. Now these are not, these are yes, no answers, but there's, it's not a, a a right or a wrong answer. If you don't have absorption filters, it isn't necessarily a negative depending on how the whole threat matrix um, happens. Okay, what is the filter efficiency rating on all exterior air handling units? Again, these are complicated things. You might have to talk to the building manager about it. You might have to talk to the people who installed the air handling system, but is it HEPA rated? Is it MERV rated? Is it a combination of the filters or is it not rated at all? So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna assume commercial is, oh, there's a lot of HEPA. So I'm just gonna leave HEPA rated there. Um, is there a capacity for emergency shutdown? Yes or no? If, if it's no, it pretty much means it's running and if something happens, it's gonna keep running. Um, now, and then when I say that, you know, you can always cut the overall general power to the entire school, but really this is, is there capacity for that individual unit to be shut down in an emergency? Does the school have shelter in place policies related to contamination of the HVAC systems? Now we will be talking about policies and procedures in another section, but this is for that sp specific question. Do we have um, shelter in place policies for the HVAC system? I'm gonna say yes. Does the facility have ev evacuation policies related to contamination of the HVAC system? I'm gonna say yes. Does the facility have written procedures for the shutdown or exhaust of the air handling system? I'm gonna say yes. Okay, now, is the shutoff system a one-step process? I'm gonna say yes. So this has to do, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, this is a, just a general question. Are there redundant locations for the one-step shutoff? And I'm gonna say yes. Does the HVAC system have an emergency response mode? Okay, that's a yes or no answer. You might have to talk to your HVAC manufacturer, whoever installed it for you, or maybe your building maintenance people are gonna know the answer to this. We're gonna say yes or no. Again, if you don't know the answers to things, reach out to us and let's see if we can help. Are there procedures in place to close doors and windows to seal the building? Yes or no? I'm gonna say yes. 
is the air handling system connected to a computer workstation? So the reason for this is, this is more of a cybersecurity question and answer. So if you're saying it's connected to a computer workstation, then we're gonna ask, you know, can you, you know, can it be hacked? And that'll be, you know, outside of this. Okay, next, um, can the HVAC system be status be viewed on site? I'm gonna say yes. Can the HVAC system controller or sensors be controlled or altered? I'm gonna say no. Can the HVAC system be remotely accessed? I'm going to say no. Can the HVAC system be remotely controlled? Now, remotely controlled, that means like, can somebody off campus turn on or off your HVAC? I'm gonna say no. Does the system require a username or password to log in? I'm gonna say yes. Is the HVAC connected to an enterprise network? Basically, is your HVAC system on your computer network? I'm gonna say no. Does it have an identified owner? That means is there somebody inside of your organization, inside of your school, like a building maintenance person or somebody at the district manager who's responsible for that HVAC system. I don't actually mean they physically own it. I mean that they're the person who is in charge of the HVAC. It may be somebody who's on your campus and maybe somebody at your district office, or it might actually be uh, somebody that you've contracted with. And we're going to say, yes, there is a system owner. Uh, does the system controlling the HVAC have a system security plan? Um, Again, that is important, we're gonna say yes. Are all components in the HVAC system checked for software or firmware updates on a recurring basis? This is especially important if your HVAC is connected to your school network, and we're gonna say yes. When was the last firmware update completed? We're gonna say never. And do the HVAC system controls have an intrusion detection system incorporated into the control system, control area? No. Okay, so all of these questions, notice we had a heck of a lot of questions just in the um, section overview. Um, that's because we're assuming you have air intake. You, ha you have a HVAC system at your school. Okay, next, the student entrances. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot of questions about the student entrances. Again, these are something you might need assistance on knowing whether or not the doors to your school are blast resistant, bullet resistant, metal clad, hollow steel, wood or solid core, wood or hollow core, or a glass door. And your definition of a glass door means at least 50% of the door is glass. Um, and we're gonna assume that you have like a metal clad door. Um, are the following present on the main entrance door? Is there interior concealed hinges, a reinforced strike plate, high security locks? Is it a fire related door? Are there burglar resistant hinges or none of the above? So in this case, I'm gonna say we have interior hinges, we have high security locks, um, building code probably means it's a fire rated door. And then um, we'll leave it at that. Okay, what is the distance from the student entrance to the closest parking lot? Okay, these are, again, these are redundant questions because when we ask the, the parking lot questions, we're doing it for each of the parking lots. Now, in this case, we just wanna know what is the closest parking lot. So in this case, we're gonna say the closest parking lot is less than 50 feet. The student drop-off is less than um, 50 feet. Now, if you give answers that actually um, uh, don't agree with each other, we will catch that during the validation procedure. So if you don't have any student ent entrances that you say are less than 50 feet, but you say it's less than 50 feet here, we will notice that. Um, and it's not that big of a deal. It just gets fixed during the validation stuff. Is the student main entrance monitored by an intrusion detection system? Meaning, um, during school hours, if somebody tries to break in through this, the main student entrance, are you gonna know it because of an IDS? We're gonna say yes. Is the door on a 24 hour zone, meaning it's never disarmed? So you're always, um, you're always looking at the intrusion detection system. I'm gonna say yes. Is the main student entrance monitored by a video surveillance system? And I'm gonna say yes. 
and what is the coverage level. Okay, so this is these are starting to re repeat some of the things that we saw. We have this basically the same set of questions in our outdoor areas. We have it for our perimeter security. Now we're talking about our student entrances. Does your video surveillance system uh, have 100% coverage of your student entrance? At your student entrance, are there containers or fixtures that could conceal an explosive device? So is there an explosive device potentially near the main student entrance? So we're going to say no. And if you answered yes, your questions are, do you have a mailbox? Is it a vending machine? We're basically going to ask you what it is. Um, in that case, we're not asking yes, so just leave this one blank. Um, have Blast containment measures been implemented on fixtures near the entry points. Okay, in other words, so let's say you have a garbage can or other fixtures where um, you, that if there's a blast, um, will that blast be contained? So if we say yes, it's all filters or all fixtures, some of them or none of them. So we're going to say all fixtures. Now, if we have a second student entrance, we're going to do the same thing as we always do. We're going to click on add another area of this type. We're going to give it a name and a description. And then we get to answer all these questions for this section again. OK. So now that we've been through the student entrance, we get to go to the non-student entrance. So the non-student entrance has mostly the same questions, so I'm going to go through them pretty quick just to find the ones that are different. So we're going to say it's a hollow steel non-student entrance, it's got uh, high security locks, it's fire rated, and it's got a reinforced strike plate. It's um, between 100 and 400 feet. Um, it's between 100 and 400 feet um, from the closest drop-off point. Is it monitored by an intrusion detection system? We're going to say yes. Is it on a 24-hour zone? Yes. We're going to, is it monitored by a video surveillance system? We're going to say yes. 100% partial. Um, there are containers, or there are no containers or fixtures that can hold explosive devices. Um, so we're not going to have any answered here. And then blast containment, we're going to say some. So if it's a non-student entrance, are, you know, what controls do you have? What building envelopes do you have for your non-student entrance? Okay, that one was basically the same as the student entrance. Now we're gonna look at the dock and delivery area. Okay, so if you're at the dock and delivery area, can you actually get into the main school? So it is possible that you could, add, you know, it be laid out so that you actually can get to the dock and delivery area, but if you're dropping something off, that doesn't mean you can get into the school. So that is the best case. We're going to say yes. Is the dock attended during school hours? We're going to say no, it's not. We're going to say it's just attended when somebody's dropping something off. Um, are deliveries controlled and restricted during school hours, meaning we're not going to allow you to even deliver anything to the dock during school hours? And I'm going to say yes. Um, what controls are used to authorize access to the dock or delivery area? Because this is not, these are not your students who are showing up. These are delivery people. These are people who might be uh, FedEx delivery, UPS, um, any kinds of shipments. Um, your vendor, your vending machines, that, those kind of things. So what controls do you have? Is it a face-to-face -face or is it a call box? I Meaning do you have to see a human before you can get to the dock or delivery? Or does somebody just get to buzz in and in which case you're going to give them access to the dock and delivery access? I'm going to say face-to-face. -face. Um, during operating hours, does the delivery area use locks and technologies? Meaning during the school hours, um, or actually during operating hours, meaning any hours that delivery areas can, are you using locks and technologies? And when you say yes, um, maybe the dock has uh, eye hand signature voice biometrics. There's an ID actuated like a prox card. Um, maybe the vendors or somebody who needs to get to the dock uses a pin that's electronically coded or a mechanically coded one where it's basically unlocks a lock when you put a pin in. Is it a keyed lock, a combination lock, a, or a padlock chain? So we're going to say um, we have an electronically coded pin for locks and technology. Is the delivery area monitored by video surveillance? We're going to say yes. Are there signs that say video surveillance system in use? We're going to say yes. Does video monitoring cover the entire delivery area? We're going to say yes. 
Does anything interfere with the VSS operate, uh, observation that creates blind spots or concealed areas? Nope, we're going to say no. Is the delivery area illuminated? We're going to say no because we're not getting anything during dark hours. We're just going to say no. Um, are there objects such as trash receptacles, vending machines, mailboxes where explosives may be hidden? We're going to say no. Okay. So this is your dock and delivery area questions. Again, they're kind of daunting. There's a lot to them, but now we're going to get to the window area. Now the window area means a large area of windows. So if you just have small windows, that's really not considered a window area. These are the window areas that somebody could, uh, you know, break in. You know, if you break these windows, you can actually get into a classroom or you can get into the interior sections of the facility. So small windows that you can't, that wouldn't give you access to the facility or to the school um, doesn't count as a window area. So I'm going to click on show questions. Okay, what do we have on our window areas? Do we have blast film or blast curtains, blast film, bullet resistant glass, laminated glass, thermally tempered glass, and none. Now, um, if you have hurricane resistant windows, okay, find out if they're also considered bullet resistant, blast resistant, or blast curtains. Because it is quite possible that if you're in an area that has hurricane shutters or hurricane windows, even though they're not actually designed to be um, protective security from a from an armed threat or the, that kind of threat, they do they they may actually protect you um, from those things if you have hurricane windows or hurricane shutters. So I would find out from your manufacturer what they what they say for answering this question. So I'm actually going to say we have blast curtains. Um, are access control dr uh, driven protective measures in place? Something like did you? Did you put something on the windows that will stop somebody from breaking through? So the, the question before really had more to do with explosions and shootings. This has to do with breaking in like a security mesh through the window. So we're going to say yes. Um, can the ground floor windows be opened? We're going to say yes. Can the exterior ground floor windows be locked? We're going to say yes. Are operational windows within 15 feet of ground level or other access point? Meaning, are there windows that you can get into that are within 16 feet of the ground level? So that's kind of a redundant question from these ground floor windows, but now we're getting into the detail of are they at least 16 feet? So we're going to say no. Are exterior windows publicly accessible locations designed to resist force entry. So when your windows were put in, were they put in just to be windows that let light in or was thought given in to um, resisting forced entry with them or was that something that was actually added later? So we're gonna say yes. Are all window openings in publicly accessible areas such as mechanical vents and exposed plenums protected to resist force entry? We're going to say yes. Do blind curtain, blinds, curtains, or under other window coverings prevent visual observation? So if you're outside the windows, do it, can you look in and see the students or see what's going inside of the classroom? And I'm going to say that it. we prevent that. So we're going to say yes. Are the windows tinted? I'm going to say no. Are ballistics included hurricane-rated windows installed and I'm going to say yes that that is kind of the same what we were talking about up here with the protective measures of the windows that's a direct question asking you if you have hurricane windows or ballistic windows so this is your window areas um, again uh, building envelope is one of the more complicated of the this section. So don't be too surprised if you don't know the answer to all the questions or if you need to reach out to, for help. Um, when uh, assessors come on campus to do a security assessment, building envelope is where they're going to spend a lot of their time. So don't be surprised if um, this is a more difficult or daunting section to answer.